evidence of past life in those. But the latest and most compelling evidence of Martian life isn't in an ancient meteorite, but on Mars today, even though this new evidence is invisible. And for years, scientists looking for life on Mars have followed the water. But there may be something to follow that's even more dramatic. Between 1999 and 2009, spectrographic observations of Mars detect a combination of carbon and hydrogen called methane gas. The discovery of methane on Mars, in Mars' atmosphere, was a real surprise to people. Plumes of the gas seem to be coming from a few hot spots during the Martian summer. The trouble is, there shouldn't be any methane on Mars. On Mars, even just the presence of methane is a little bit mysterious because uh, it breaks down. On Earth, the unstable methane molecule disintegrates after about 300 years. But on Mars, high doses of ultraviolet radiation and perhaps the newly discovered dry lightning in the thin, dusty Martian atmosphere break the methane down in just a few months. And so if you see it there, it means there must be something resupplying it. Even though it's being broken down, it's getting resupplied. Where's the Martian methane coming from? On Earth, volcanoes produce vast amounts of methane. But even though Mars has Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system, it hasn't erupted for millions of years. So what are the other choices? Methane can be produced underground when basaltic rock gets turned into a mineral called serpentine, uh, and that releases methane, and that methane can seep up through the ground and come out of the atmosphere. But this process requires hot liquid water, which hasn't yet been found on or within Mars. Could be volcanoes, which we don't know to be active on Mars, so that would be interesting. Could be some subsurface chemistry with liquid water, which we don't know to be on Mars, so it'd be interesting. Or it could be due to biology. On Earth, 90% of methane comes from bacteria in animals and plants. Is the Martian methane coming from underground colonies of bacteria? The discovery of methane on Mars led to headlines of us having definitively found evidence for life on Mars. And entire chat rooms were set up to discuss these various creatures. But in fact, though the discovery of methane is interesting, it doesn't mean that we found creatures wandering around on Mars. Maybe it is life. It's an arrow to something, and maybe the thing at the end of the arrow is life. The search for the source of Martian methane has become a priority for explorers and is on the mission list for the next rover to be sent to Mars. So we're looking at a uh, so-called test bed version of the Mars Science Laboratory rover. And the Mars Science Laboratory, when it gets down to the surface, will measure methane. So we'll know the answer once that rover gets down there. The Mars Science Laboratory, dubbed Curiosity, will launch in the fall of 2011 and land in 2012. It's the size of a small car and will use an amazing new landing technique, the sky crane. At about 60 feet above the ground, the rover is separated from the descent stage and lowered on a line, which we call the bridle, and slowly lowered to the ground and lowered to the ground. When the rover's wheels touch down on the ground, the descent stage detects that. It cuts those lines and far away, and the rover is on the ground on its wheels, ready to go do its job. The high-frequency radar, essential to the sky crane landing, is mounted to a helicopter and taken for a test drive at California's Edwards Air Force Base. When you're coming down on Mars, we do a bunch of simulations and analysis to go ahead and give us bounds of what we expect to see in terms of descent angles, um, in terms of attitude rates on the parachute. During the entry, descent, and landing, the radar tells us where the ground is and how fast we're going. 
That information is used by the control system to control the thrusters to make sure we touch down at a nice gentle speed. We test little pieces here and little pieces there. So the first time that we test it for real is on Mars. The key objective of the Mars Science Laboratory is to search for signs of ancient habitats. And so the rover will rove up to areas that had been soaked in water in the past and may have trapped organics. So if we find those kind of layers, we can go up to that kind of a rock and we can drill into it and take the material from inside the rock and can tell with a lot of precision what the rock is composed of and whether there's organics in there. The Mars Science Laboratory will be one more link in a chain of exploration to understand that bright red dot in the dark night sky. Put together all the new evidence, and it adds up to the need for more evidence. We don't know how the magnetic field was lost. We don't know exactly how the atmosphere was lost. We don't know where all the water went. We don't know whether the methane is produced by life or just regular abiotic chemical reactions. But maybe questions that baffled the 19th and 20th centuries will be answered in the 21st. I asked five other Mars scientists, what percentage chance would each of you give that life ever formed on Mars? Four of us thought it was maybe greater than 90% chance that there had been at some time and maybe now life on Mars. And two of us thought it was less than 15%. And the follow-on question then is, if you think that there is less than 15% chance, is it really worth going to look for it? And the answer was immediately, absolutely. I don't think that rovers and landers and orbiters are gonna find life on Mars. My personal opinion, I think it's gonna take people. I think there will come a day when, when people go to Mars. Digging and drilling and thinking and just going with context and gut feel and putting the pieces of a very complicated puzzle together, I'm optimistic that we're going to find evidence of past or present 